Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, we are now down to the lesson that people have been calling me about, writing me about, texting me about, Skyping me about, paging me about. The one lesson that everyone has been waiting for and I'm talking of course about editing. Now we're obviously going to take an introductory look at editing in this tutorial, but as we go on and in the next few lessons, you're going to see that we're going to start adding little things and we're going to start talking a little bit about effects. We're going to start talking a little bit about audio mixing and things like that. And you're really going to start to see how all of this is going to come together to help you actually get in and start editing with clients. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's command tab into Avid's Symphony and obviously to edit we're going to need some footage to work with. Now I just happen to have here a bin opened from my stock footage project. What we're going to do is just shrink our bin down a little bit here. And let's just pick a clip at random here to start editing with. I'm just going to pick this clip right here. I'll just double click on it. Now obviously to edit something into a timeline we're going to need two things. The first thing we're going to need is of course a timeline. Second thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to decide what parts of the clip we actually want to choose to edit into our timeline. Now, obviously a couple ways to create a new timeline. The easiest way to create a new timeline is to simply mark an in and out point on a clip and simply hit the edit button to edit it into nothing. And what will happen is, is that Media Composer or Symphony will prompt you to create a new sequence. So what I'm going to do before I do that is just create a new bin and I'll call it appropriately enough sequences. And what I can actually do here, and this is a feature inside of the newer versions of Media Composer and Symphony, is I can actually tab up my bins here just to make things a little bit more real estate friendly. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we have a clip here, and like I said, a couple ways we can do this. The first and easiest way is to simply right click and say New Sequence. What I can do is just click on New Sequence, and of course, because I have two bins open, Media Composer or Symphony is going to prompt me as to which bin I want to place this sequence into, and of course, appropriately enough, we're going to put this into the Sequences bin. I'm simply going to say OK. You'll see now that we've switched over to the Sequences bin, and I now have a new sequence in that bin, which is basically empty. But you'll also see that what's happened is, is that I have a sequence that has a video and two audio clips added to it. Now you'll remember talking about our settings. If I come back into the settings, I come all the way down to the bottom to the timeline settings. I come over here to edit. This is where we can tell Media Composer or Symphony right here at the bottom, what do we want to add when we create a new sequence? You'll see that I have one video track and two audio tracks selected, one video track and two audio tracks. So what I'm going to do is just simply cancel out of that. Now you're also going to notice over here on the left hand side that I have a clip of video. And this clip only has what I just said, video only. Now how do I know that? Well I know that because over here I can only see a video track. If this clip had audio with it, and let's actually just, I'm just going to AMA link to a clip that I know has audio on it. I'm just going to select AMA link to. I'm just going to come to the desktop here for a second. And let's actually come down to my Jesse drive. I'm just going to sort by the name here. I'm just going to come into footage. I'm going to come into my elephants here and I'm just going to select one of the elephants at random. There we go. We're not going to edit this into the timeline, but I did want to call it up just to show you that I know that this clip does have audio and you'll see that there we go, audio one and audio two. So what I'm going to do is actually just delete that AMA linked to clip and let's come back to our stock footage bin. I'm just going to double click on that clip and let's choose part of this shot that we want to edit into a timeline. So I'm just going to come back and you know, maybe when the clouds start coming, maybe about there, and we're going to come down to about here. And I'm going to mark that as my out point. Now, I obviously don't have any clips in my timeline to worry about right now, except this first one that I'm going to drop in. So, a couple ways to drop this clip into a timeline. Now, most people when they're starting out like to do things the visual way, much like in Final Cut Pro. You know in Final Cut Pro there's multiple ways to edit a clip into your timeline. Most people like to resort to using these two buttons right here. Now, you're going to notice that one button is yellow, one button is red. Those two colors are something that's very important to keep in mind. Yellow always represents an insert function, meaning if I was to have multiple clips in my timeline, I was to take a clip and I was going to go to edit it into my timeline, and I use the insert method or the splice in method to do that, what's going to happen is, is that that clip is going to get edited in and everything is going to be pushed down the timeline. Now, if I'm going to use the overwrite function, the overwrite function is basically going to take the clip and it's just going to plop it right down on top of whatever happens to be there. 
And I'm going to show you an example of this in just a second. But those two colors are exceptionally important to keep in mind. Now again, if we're working in the visual way, once I have an in point and an out point marked, by simply using I and O on my keyboards, that's on both Mac and Windows, all I have to do now is simply come over here and I can choose either insert or splice in or overwrite to edit this clip into a timeline. Now you're going to see that because I have the audio tracks there in my timeline, what happened is the video is laid in and nothing is put in underneath it. I can now simply come back. I can either hit the space bar to play or I can simply hit the play button right here. There's the clip playing in my timeline. It's obviously a time lapse shot from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD. And you'll see that we now have the clip in our timeline. Now let's pick a couple more clips to drop in so we can talk a little bit more about inserting and overwrite editing. Again, we're just picking clips at random. I'm just going to double click on them here. That's a very nice looking shot here. Again, random in point, random out point. Again, I'm simply going to hit the overwrite button to overwrite that into my timeline. And let's just pick one more right down here. Pretty cool. Some satellites here. We'll look at that. We'll get them when they're turning. So what we're going to do is just come down to the turn point. There we go. Again, I'm going to overwrite this clip into my timeline. Now, we're talking about the differences between overwrite and splicing in, or you'll hear that commonly referred to as insert editing. And let's take a look at the difference right now. So again, let's just grab another clip at random here. Sure. How about this one? And what I want to do is I want to take this clip and I want to add it to my timeline in between these two shots. I don't want to shorten these shots at all. I want to just add it in. So what we're going to do again is just mark an in and out point here, completely random. It's not too bad just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to the point where that edit happens. Now what most people you'll see do is they sort of come back and they're like, okay, that's pretty close. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go frame by frame. Now how do I know that I'm at the actual first frame of this cut? Well, it's actually very easy to tell. You'll see over here in the sequence window, we have a little sort of square bracket here that's telling me that this is the first frame of this shot. Now, how do I know this is the first frame of the shot? Well, you'll see if I go back one frame, I have the exact opposite little icon here telling me that this is the last frame of this shot. You'll see again, if I come down here, there we go. First frame of this shot, I can go back one frame, last frame of that shot. Now you'll see that obviously coming back and kind of, you know, coming up and using, you know, the go back one frame, you know, go forward one frame, go back 10 frames, you know, go forward 10 frames. That's not really a great way to get in and really edit. What I like to do is use the command key on the Mac, the control key on Windows. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to let us snap to our edit points. So if I hold command right now, you'll see that whatever edit I click closest to, I'm actually going to snap right to that edit point. Very cool. So once I snap to that edit point, if I don't have an in or out point marked, what's going to happen is, is that Media Composer of Symphony is going to assume that the time indicator or the time bar is where this clip is going to get edited in. Now you'll remember I said that I want to take these two clips and I want to push them down and add this shot in so that we now have four shots. No problem. What I'm going to do is simply hit splice in and you're going to see right down here and you'll be able to tell because you can actually see what time I'm at in the timeline. Right now, that's about, you know, just short of 16 seconds. So I'm going to come back here. What I'm going to do is simply hit splice in and you'll see now that if I come all the way down to the end, we're now almost down at about 19 seconds. So you'll see that clip has been added in and these other two shots have been pushed down the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo what I just did because I want to talk a little bit about overwrite editing. Obviously technique is still the same. The function of the edit itself is a little bit different. So what we're going to do now is instead of coming right down to the edit point, I'm just going to come back a little bit. It doesn't even really matter where. That's probably pretty good. And instead of hitting insert, now actually what I'm going to do actually is just hit insert so you can see that what happens is that if I insert that clip here, we got a little bit of the start of this shot. Then we cut to that crazy satellite shot there. And then we cut back to that little part that I pushed down and then we go into the next shot. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did because that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to actually cover over part of this shot, the end, and part of this shot, the beginning, with this shot here. Now how we do that, obviously exactly the same as the splice and edit except we're going to use overwrite. And you'll see down here in the timeline, as soon as I click overwrite, this clip has now been added to the timeline but the duration of my sequence hasn't changed. You'll see now, same shot to begin with, then we cut to our crazy satellite shot, then we cut to the next shot of the clouds, and then cut to the next shot of our satellite dishes again. 
So you'll see, very important to keep in mind, splice in is going to take everything, push it down your timeline. Overwrite is going to take that clip, drop it right down on top. Now let's talk about something else, and this is something that's actually very important to keep in mind. We're going to talk about three-point editing, because in most cases, three-point editing is the type of editing that you're going to do. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did with dropping that clip in, and I'm going to create a timeline that only has two clips in it, just like that. Because I want to talk about the technique, like I said, three-point editing that you're going to use when you're working. Now, what does three-point editing mean? Well, three-point editing means that you're going to need three points or three uh, in slash out points. And, and I'm going to sort of explain that a little bit better in just a second to actually get clips to go where you want in your timeline. Now, when I say three points, that could be two in points and one out point. That could be two out points and an in point. Let me show you what I mean. So you'll see right now in this clip right here, I have an in point and an out point marked. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, you know what? Right now, I want this clip to go in right here. You'll see what I've actually done is now created a three point edit. One point, two point, three points, and all I have to do now is simply say edit, and that clip is edited into my timeline. Now, most people think that this is really the only way you're going to do three-point editing. You're going to have, you know, your clip in your preview window. You'll mark an in point, mark an out point. You'll mark an in point in your sequence. You'll edit it in. But actually, believe it or not, in most cases, you're not going to do that. You're actually going to work in reverse. What I'm going to do is say, okay, you know what? In this timeline, I only want to fill up this area right here with a clip. So what I've done now is I've marked an in and an out point. You'll see right up here the center duration of that is two seconds and four frames. The problem is the clip I've marked over here is two seconds and 29 frames. You'll see they don't match, so something's not going to go in quite right. This is where three-point editing comes in. In most cases, what you're going to do is you're going to look at this shot here, and I'm just going to remove the in and out points by hitting G on the keyboard. That's the shortcut to remove the in and out points. So you'll see I actually have a shortcut right here called clear both marks that I can do the exact same thing with. So you'll see now, again, I have one point, I have two points. I'm going to need a third point to edit this clip into my timeline. If I don't add one myself, the time bar will always be considered the in point. So let's just come back here. And let's just say, oh, I don't know, maybe about there. That's going to be my in point. And now I'm ready to drop this in. The first frame here is going to be edited in right here. And this clip is going to end wherever the duration tells the clip to end. You'll see it's actually going to be two seconds and four frames long. Now, instead of coming over here and hitting overwrite, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut to overwrite is B on both Mac and Windows. B, you know, B for overwrite. Actually, I meant B for Bob, but that's okay. And the shortcut for splicing is V, you know, V for splicing or V for victory. Uh, so what we're going to do is just simply hit B on the keyboard, and you'll see now that this clip is dropped in at exactly the frame that I wanted it dropped in at. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say I didn't really care what the in point was, but I knew exactly what I wanted the out point to be. What I'm going to do is just remove that in point by pressing D on the keyboard, D as in dog on both Mac and Windows. And I'm just going to come down here and say, you know what, I think that right about, you know, that satellite stays kind of where it is for too long. So I think what I'm going to do is that's going to be my out point right there. What I'm going to do is mark an out point. Remember, we're still talking about three point editing. One point, two points, three points. And I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard. And you'll see that if I come back one frame, we have the exact same frame as the very end, because remember, the out point is going to be where it's going to start from, and it's going to work its way back from there. So you'll see three-point editing is really the technique you're going to use when you're editing. I use it all the time, pr practically on every edit that I do. The big question is, is that where are you going to be using the three-point editing? Are you going to be using you know, your in and out points in your preview window, or are you going to use them in your sequence window? In most cases, you're going to find yourself doing a lot of your, your introductory editing using it over here in the preview window. Once you have your timeline, you know, and you're pretty happy with it, you're going to be going in, you're going to make making minor adjustments. You know, maybe you want to add a shot in here, add a shot in there. But you don't want to get in and start worrying about altering anything you know, major in the timeline. That's where you're going to start adding your in and out points in your timeline. And you're just going to add one in point or out point 
in your preview window to get in and be precise with your edits. Okay, so I think that's a good introductory look at editing inside of Media Composer. Now you can get in inside of your own timelines and put clips in and really start to get in and get precise with them using the three-point editing technique to start to refine things, you know, get a better looking end edit. Now in our next lesson, we're going to continue talking about editing. We're going to talk a little bit more about some intermediate techniques. And what we're also going to do is get in and start talking about some basic effects work. And I'm talking about transitions. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.